We are officially four weeks into the NFL season, so in today's video, I want to cut through all of the bluff and tell you guys every single true Super Bowl contender. So as I mentioned, we are going to be talking about every single true Super Bowl contender. Now this is going to be a big video of contention where a lot of you guys are going to disagree with my opinions, but that's okay. You can always feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments. However, before I actually get into my list of each contender, I do want to hand out three honorable mentions. These are teams that I think are really close to being true contenders i just haven't seen enough quite yet to give them that title quite yet and those teams are going to be the new york jets the green bay packers the seattle seahawks and the philadelphia eagles all four of those teams just have to prove a little bit more before i can seriously consider them true super bowl contenders but with that all being said we are going to go through each individual team one at a time so with that being said if you guys do enjoy the video hit the like and subscribe button but let's get into it's time it. we're going to begin with the buffalo bills now, yes, Buffalo is coming off a pretty bad loss to the Baltimore Ravens, but I think they do have a nice little formula for success. They have a quarterback who, in my opinion, can win the MVP award. They have offensive weapons that provide different things for this offense. For example, Khalil Shakir is a bit more of your run after the catch guy. He's somebody who can take some underneath drags and can do a lot more of the slot work. Whereas somebody like Keon Coleman might be your big play guy. He's a bigger frame, a wider catch radius, can do all those sort of things. And then, of course, you have other guys like Curtis Samuel, who can be a bit of your scat back and do a whole bunch of stuff in the offense. And of course, James Cook, Dalton Kincaid, and a solid offensive line. And with all of the improvements they've made defensively, which didn't unfortunately show against the Ravens, but they've made some strides defensively, makes me think that this is a team that actually has a bit of a chance. Now, of course, this has been a team that has consistently struggled to beat a team like the Chiefs in the playoffs. And while I don't necessarily know how that's going to play out if they play it out today, I do think this team at least has a solid enough chance to potentially make that run. So with that being said, let's move on to our next team, which is going to be the team that beat the Buffalo Bills, the Baltimore Ravens. Now for the Baltimore Ravens, I know they haven't looked the greatest so far this year. They're two and two. They have a loss to the Raiders, a loss to the Chiefs, and they've beaten the last two teams, the Dallas Cowboys in kind of ugly fashion, but then they dominated the Baltimore or the Buffalo Bills. For Baltimore, it's kind of similar to the Buffalo Bills. You have an MVP level quarterback. You have a running game that is extremely dominant with Derrick Henry. Your receiving core has some variety to it, guys who play certain roles. And defensively speaking, we all know what this Ravens defense can be when they're playing at their highest level. Now, this team does have some issues. Obviously, they don't really have a consistent receiver, one who can consistently get wide open. But when you have a playmaker like Lamar Jackson, who can do all that stuff with his legs, who can run with the football, can easily do play actions and RPOs when they want to, this is going to be a team that can consistently put up points. And as long as their defense can hold their end of the deal up, which they typically do, they're going to be totally fine. Now, similar to the Buffalo Bills, the one thing holding back Baltimore the past couple years has been, can they get over the hump in the playoffs? And can they get over the hump of the Kansas City Chiefs? And while I don't have the answer to that, obviously we saw it in week one and they lost. I do believe that they would at least have a chance of potentially making that run. But let us go ahead and move on to my next true contender, which is going to be the Houston Texans. Now, admittedly speaking, I haven't been terribly impressed with the Texans so far through the season. They obviously had a really bad loss to the Minnesota Vikings where they got destroyed. And they've kind of had a couple games that were a lot more closer than what I would personally like. But at the end of the day, I do think this team has a solid recipe. And I think eventually things will start to click for this team. On the offensive end, you have an MVP candidate in CJ Stroud, who's playing at a very high level still. You also have three very good receiving weapons, especially when tanked does get healthy and this team has been missing honestly their offensive catalyst and joe mixon who's going to help this offense sort of figure out any of the kinks they're struggling with today and defensively speaking i know they haven't played the best ball quite yet especially against the minnesota vikings but i do think this defense has a recipe and has the quality of pieces to hold their end of the deal up when it comes down to a playoff game this team has the experience of what happened last year they have veterans now in the lineup with joe mixon stefan diggs uh Daniel hunter so on and so forth so i do feel like this texans team has that recipe obviously we've only seen one playoff run from houston so we don't know how they're going to play in the playoffs quite yet but from everything that i've seen up to this point i still do have to have faith in this texas team because i think they're a really good team moving on to actually our last team in the afc is going to be of course the kansas city chiefs 
Now, Kansas City is 4-0, and they have some pretty impressive victories over the likes of the Baltimore Ravens and the Cincinnati Bengals and the Atlanta Falcons, a bunch of teams that are really good, but they also haven't really had a sexy win yet. They've been sort of just getting by with these victories, but they've been winning in kind of like I've been saying throughout my past couple videos, they've been winning in the Chiefs way. And you might ask, well, what is the Chiefs way? Well, the Chiefs way is often really ugly wins that just come down to which quarterback makes a mistake first and you're never really going to see Patrick Mahomes make mistakes especially when it matters most. Now I would say thus far Patrick Mahomes hasn't looked very good but despite the fact that he hasn't looked good this team is still 4-0 and has beaten the likes of the Bengals and the Ravens who I think are two teams that are going to make the playoffs. So yes, they're definitely not hitting their stride early on, but when it comes down to it, I think they'll be hitting their stride come playoff time. Now, the Rasheed Rice injury does concern me, and if it is a season-ending injury, which by all accounts it does sound like, that definitely is going to hurt this offense because he is such a massive part of this offense for this Chiefs team. But with Travis Kelsey starting to get his stride, with Xavier Worthy looking really good, and once they get Isaiah Pacheco back from injury, I don't really feel like this offense is going to be losing its stride especially when it matters most in the playoffs at the end of the day you have the best quarterback in the nfl you have a great offensive line one healthy you're going to have a better receiving core than what you had last year you're going to have isaiah pacheco and this defense is still maybe the best defense in the entire nfl so this team has a recipe they have experience they have the quarterback they have the head coach i know they've struggled in certain spots this season and they haven't had that sexy win that a super bowl champion would want to have but i do think this team will eventually start to get those and eventually start to get their stride especially when it comes down to the playoffs because at the end of the day can never doubt Patrick Mahomes but let's go ahead and move on to a team that I think is really shocking that they're actually on this list but from what I've seen they clearly have a recipe for success and I think it's pretty replicable and that's going to be the Minnesota Vikings now as I said I never in my mind would have ever had thought this Vikings team would be on this list but I think we have to give them the respect they deserve they have beaten the likes of the Green Bay Packers they've beaten the likes of the Houston Texans. They've beaten the likes of the NFC champions from last year in the San Francisco 49ers. And they've done this in a way that I think isn't fluky. Like, yes, sometimes you have a quarterback who goes on a heater. I remember Nick Foles in like 2012 had like a crazy seven game stretch. Maybe it was another year, but you get my point. But that really isn't the case for Sam Darnold. It isn't like he's doing anything that's fluky and isn't repeatable or sustainable. What is sustainable is this high level of defense they're playing. What is sustainable is how they're affected running the football, not throwing turnovers, easily getting the ball to their number one weapon in Justin Jefferson. And I think it's very important that we say this, this is a Vikings team that isn't even 100% yet. They're dealing with injuries on both sides of the football. TJ Hawkinson hasn't played a snap of football yet. Hopefully he comes back and plays very well. And we just saw our first little glimpse of Jordan Addison this season who came in and scored a couple touchdowns. So this is a Vikings team that already is somewhat battle tested and has already passed all of those battles and they're going to get more healthy. They have a defense that in my opinion currently might be the best defense in the NFL. It's up there with the Chiefs and the Ravens. And when their offense simply just doesn't turn the ball over and can methodically move the ball down the field, win time of possession, they're probably going to win those games. And so for this Vikings team, obviously there is always the chance that Sam Darnold comes back out there and throws three interceptions and doesn't look like the guy we've seen through the first four weeks. But because the way he's playing, I think is very repeatable. It's just a very simple game plan for him. And he's succeeding at a very high level. I kind of feel like this Vikings team actually has a chance. Now, I do think it's very important that we say that we've kind of seen this from this Vikings team. Obviously, a few years ago, they were like, I think 10 and 0 or 8 and 0 or something along those lines and had a really good start to their season. And then things fizzled out. And I think they lost to the Giants that year. But for this Vikings team, what I'm seeing against really quality teams, I think is something that can be sustained maybe even come playoff time but with that all being said i already made a full video on the minnesota vikings so if you guys want to see that check that video out after this video of course but let's move on to the next team which is going to be the detroit lions now yes this is a lions team that did lose to tampa bay but outside of that tampa bay loss they have passed every single test for the most part with flying colors uh obviously that game against tampa bay just didn't really go their way but in that game i do think there were still a lot of positives that you could take away from it 
points. And I would say their most impressive win so far through the season happened on Monday night versus the Seattle Seahawks. It was a bit more of a higher scoring affair where Jared Goff looked like an MVP candidate. He took care of the football, was precise with it, and scored, I think, 42 points on the night. And this is a team that already has established themselves as a contender. We already knew this coming into the season. They made it to the NFC Championship game last year and probably could have won that game had they not made a couple mistakes. They have the weapons, they have the running game, they have the offensive line, and defensively, once Terry and Arnold starts to get going with his NFL game because he's really struggling so far, I do feel like this is a defense that is of the caliber of a champion. I think Detroit has a recipe for success. They know what they want to do offensively. They have a head coach who, you know, obviously this team is going to run through a wall for. They breathe and play football through that through him. And I think for this Lions team, they also have that extra little boost of motivation from what happened last year where they had such a massive lead on San Francisco and blew it. So because this team has the personnel, it has the coaching staff, and it also has the motivation, I feel like this is a team that easily could be in the conversation to win a championship. But then if we're going to talk about the Detroit Lions being this, we got to throw in the team here that beat the Detroit Lions in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, admittedly speaking, I would say of all the teams I've talked about up to this point, I would probably venture to say that Tampa Bay might be the farthest away from being a Super Bowl contender, but I also do want to give them the respect they deserve. This is a team that dominated the Philadelphia Eagles. Yes, the Eagles were extremely injured, but they still dominated them. This is a same Buccaneers team that managed to beat the Detroit Lions as well. And yes, they lost to the Denver Broncos, but that Denver defense actually is starting to look pretty damn good. So, and I, honestly, I think if those teams were to play again, I think Tampa Bay would beat them. So I'm not really that concerned about the Denver loss, but they're three and one on the season. They've beaten some really good teams. And obviously we saw what this team did last year when they made it to the playoffs and they beat the Philadelphia Eagles in handle fashion in the playoffs last year. And then had a very close and competitive game with Detroit. And while this team may not have that, you know, top five quarterback that a lot of teams I've talked about in this video have, they do have a quarterback who doesn't turn the ball over, plays at a very high level, gets the ball out to his playmakers, obviously Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, so on and so forth. And this team sort of feels like it's found something with Bucky Irving too. So if they can get that run game really going with Irving and Rashad White, that definitely does make this offense that much better. The offensive line to me at least looks very improved. And with this defense still being the caliber of defense that it's been the past couple years, I do feel like this team has a chance to potentially make that run. Now, again, of all the teams I've talked about, this is the one that I'm maybe the most skeptical about, but I do want to give them their flowers. I do think they have a recipe for success and a formula that is sustainable sustainable and repeatable to potentially make that deep playoff run at the end of the day they're not asking baker mayfield to be superman like the chiefs are with mahomes or like the texans are with stroud and of course lamar jackson for the ravens he's really just going out there and sort of being a point guard for this offense he's just distributing the football to guys when they need it in precise form and not throwing turnovers and he's doing that job at a very high level and hell, when they do ask him to go out there and make plays, he does typically make the plays. He uses his legs. He uses his aggressiveness. He can throw the ball extremely accurately down the field. I mean, this is a quarterback that this Buccaneers team kind of needs right now, and I feel like he's doing a very good job of it. But the last team in this video is going to be the San Francisco 49ers. Now, I recently put on my community tab a power ranking uh, list of the top 10 teams in the NFL. And on that list was the San Francisco 49ers. And I had a couple people comment, why are the San Francisco 49ers on here? They haven't beaten anyone and they're two and two and haven't looked good this year. And I think honestly, it's quite simple. It isn't about who they've beaten or what their record is. It's about who this team has been for the past four or five years now. This is the same San Francisco team that made it to a championship last year. So I'm not just going to magically forget about them and just pretend that they're not a good team. This is a Niners team that is led by a very good quarterback and Brock Purdy. It has a head coach that has experience. He's a great offensive mind. Yes, this team has some issues right now. They don't have Christian McCaffrey. They don't have a good offensive line and the defense hasn't looked good, but you got to imagine that this team is going to figure this stuff out. Unlike a team, let's say like the Philadelphia Eagles, who I don't have on this list, I think this team has the coaching staff and it has the, the personnel to fix a lot of their mistakes. And because I believe in those players and I believe in this coaching staff, I have to believe in this 49ers team.
Again, they won the NFC last year. They've also made it to a Super Bowl a couple times the past couple years. They've been deep in the playoffs. And honestly, I, I don't see how that's going to stop this year. Yes, they have some injuries, but assuming that those guys come back for the playoffs, this team is going to be totally fine. They're going to have a good defense. Hopefully they can figure some stuff out. And I really have no issues putting them in this video. But with that all being said, that is going to conclude the list of true Super Bowl contenders, in my opinion. Again, this is going to be a video of contention and disagreement. So if you do disagree you can always tell me in the comment section below and i'm always open to hearing your thoughts and opinions but of course if you guys did enjoy the video hit the like and subscribe button and i love you guys peace